This fly is a variant of a fly, it's, it's called Nobby's Hopper. It's, an, it's a base, an Australian, or Tasmanian pattern. Originally tied by a, a, an Allen Shepherd. Now, Allen obviously didn't do a detached body, I'm just doing a variant. Now, it's a yellow chenille body on it, but everything else is much the same. The legs, I'm using hopper legs, meaning just single knotted ones. He, he used a, he trimmed a, red, a natural red hackle or a red hackle uh, into a shape, so it gave the impression of the legs. But as I say, this is it's just for a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. Did, for the body, now the, the other one I tied was this. The tied one, just for a normal body, just the, the actual foam body without a segment segments on it. It looks a bit plain and I thought I'll just do the detached uh, obviously with the segmented body. I mean they're easy enough to tie. Yeah, I use the pre-cut foam. This is the Wopsy foam that I use for doing booby eyes and such and different bodies. And uh, this is a smaller size. Use a, a cylinder to cut it with a drill. Uh, it comes in a block so it's, it's very easy. What you do is trim it in half and then it's quite simple. Get your lighter and then melt the end or just taper it off slightly. So take away the cut end. And then I usually just tap it with my fingers. Just be careful about when you do that. Now what I'm going to do is to form. The re there's a couple of reasons why I like doing segmented bodies. Is the, the, the strong, the last long. And when you cut it right down the centre to the first segment, where the first segment will start and then I put it onto the needle. This is just a, a tube fly adapter here, it's a HMH one. Just a standard needle. It's a fine needle. Now you put it on, push it through the centre. And you'll see it just starting to come through. And then I'm using a uni thread eight oh in yellow. This this one here. Now I've waxed the thread, so what I do is I just pull the waist end. You need a good length on your finger. You want a good length because you need to tie this in when you're making the rest of the fly. So you put this on the top of the needle, slide it to the segment, first segment. Now I've got the waist end of my fingers here to keep it tight. So then what I do is I come round with one, two, three turns. And that's the first segment. And then push the cut foam away and then Basically bring your thread through onto here, come up about the next segment. So when you bring your thread through, come over, should be a segment further up. So one, two, three, open them out again, and always tying in the waist end at the same time. Now I'm only going to be doing four there now. Three turns again, come up, two or three turns, and then at this point, two or three turns. And then I'm going to hit finish. Now we've got our waist end. We've got the thread we obviously just tied the fly with. Now we need these, we need to tie these in. So we just slide it off and there we are. And that's your body ready to be tied in. So now we'll get our hook. Now the hook I'm using, this is the this is a full mill hook, it's the what we call it's a short shank special, which is basically it's a size 10. Now the shank of this hook uh, is a size it's equivalent to a size 12 hook, but the gapes equivalent to a size 10, and I like them for detached bodies. Now you could use other hooks as well as you could use a curved hook, which gives you a deeper, especially when you're doing these detached body, you need a good gape on the hook. So uh, I've used them as well in times. So, but the, this one here, if it's a Camasan, it's a B160. So, Full Mill is a short shank special, but in the Camasan, it's a B160. Now, the thread I'm using is the Uni Thread 8 in yellow. And wax it again to make sure there's wax on the thread to give you a grip. Now, I'm going to wind the thread to the point of the hook. To there. I want to keep the bend well open. We've got a detached body which is formed. Uh, I want to leave a bit more colour in it. It's always best to sit down and tie a few. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, there's the tying thread and the waist end. I'm going to tie these in because that's holding the body together. 
Now I'm going to put the foam along the side so it's like that, so if you, <coughs> it's just coming down, the cut ends are coming down like this and we form another segment, so I come round, nice and tight basically what that does, it keeps, ties in very easy that way uh, it keeps it nice and tight onto the shank of the hook as well so we've tied in the waist piece, so we trim some of that away trim away the foam we don't need, and then just make sure it's well tied in There we are. Now we're going to put the legs on now. Hopper legs are usually heavy on this. And you can buy pre-knotted hopper legs, kind of thicker ones. But I'm just going to put a good half dozen of these to give the impression of the legs at the back. So I'm going to do three either side. So I'm bringing 90 degrees from the stem. You see the tips are lined up. I'm going to separate three. So I'm going to tear them off. I just hold the ends, come in, put them down either side of the body. Now you want to see these legs, so make sure they hang well back. Come round with two or three turns, down one. Just making sure they're sitting. And there we are. Now we can trim these away, the waist. Get more wax on with thread. Now the underwing of this. This, uh, the, the hopper is the golden pheasant tippet. Now I've taken a large one off, now I've got the, still the tip of the, the large hackle. So what I do is I just cut a V into it. So what it does, it gives me a right and a left. Now this is like the underwing of this, uh, the hopper. So I'm just bringing these together, on top. Bring it to... You could probably go towards the, the end of the body, it would be fine. Make sure they're on the top. We pinch and loop or two. There we are. Trim away. Make sure. Nice base of thread down. And then for the main wing, I'm using uh, this oak turkey. And then I've got a, red, a right and a left, sorry. So I'm just going to cut a slip from either side, not too wide. The one's got a broken end, so I'll take it away. Yeah, that should be enough. Uh, one for either side. There we are. This gives an impression of the, the wing case. So when bringing them together, a natural curve coming in on the, the hook. Well, it's just slightly by the bend of the hook, or sorry, the, the end of the body. Just making sure the tip's lined up here. Can you hold it? Come around with a pinch and loop. Quite loose, like so we can move it. See how it's going to sit. That looks fine. That's fine. Tighten up. Draw away. Watch your thread, put a nice base of thread down over near here. Make sure we're right up against the body. Now I'm just using this is a bit of road here. It's uh, this comes from the, the belly, it's just on the side more than anything. It's quite light in colour. But it's a short hair and it's got quite a, a decent uh, sort of fibre on it, ideal for muddler heads, so that's why I'm using it. Now for this size of fly, I mean you want to make sure you've got enough fibre enough when you cut it off it can go all the way around so there we are I'm just bringing it out from the skin tips are reasonably lined up I'm not going to stack it I'm just going to tie it straight on now what you do is make sure there's no under fur because that will help stop it rotating around the hook or any broken ends you don't want them the more you spend and just making sure there's nothing there to stop it rotating the easier it's going to be now, I just want a short collar, I'm repping, these will represent the collar of the, uh, basically the, the shape of the head. Don't make it too long, you can make it as long as you like, but I'm usually going so, within the body. So I'm going to hold that, set it on top, come round, two loose turns, 
and then I'm going to slowly pull and allow the hair or the hair to come round the shank and then follow up through and wind it touch and turns through the deer hair, the cut ends and then keep it always nice and tight now what I'm going to do is just going to pack it back a bit just push it towards the back you can use, there's certain things you can actually use to help do that but leave enough room for the head area for some more deer hair now I've got the same deer here. I'm going to come in I'm going to tie it the opposite way because I want the the hollow ends, this, these bit cut ends for the deer hair. Again, make sure there's nothing there. You can do the same, you can do two turns on the top and rotate it around. Or the easiest way actually is to put the eye into the deer hair in the middle, the centre of the bunch of deer hair you have. To hold the ends and come round with a couple of turns like that and then tighten up and then wind your thread towards the eye. That's the easiest way. Make sure you get your deer hair or your sorry your thread in front, leave enough room. Always keeping the thread tight. Quick finish. And trim away. Now what I'm gonna do is you've got the cut ends here, just bring them out. You'll see the collar there, don't pull that out, leave it in where it is. All the way around. Just tap in the front to make sure it's going to straight up and down. Then I'm going to use a curved pair of scissors. Now you, could, you want a kind of good, decent head on this. Now what I do is just as I start, well obviously my, my vice rotates, so I use the tips of this, the curved scissors. I just start quite close and rotate. As, as I go around the trim, this Hoping I get it right, and uh, I'm not the best at this, I can admit that. There's lots of really good tires out there that can form perfect heads, and uh, I'm, I say I'm not the best at it, but they get by, there's a good enough to fish with. So, and I'm only using what I have the deer here, it's a roe deer, we get plenty of roe deer here. Just take your time, work your way around, hang out the ends, you ones you miss. It's just something you need to practice, I think, to get a decent head. I don't practice it enough, like, uh, not many deer hair patterns. I say I'm only doing this for a bit of fun. Uh, it's, uh, There we go. Now you can tighten the hair up a wee bit. The best way to do it is to actually use the, uh, the hair dryer. The heat of the hair dryer tightens the hair. So I'm just going to try that. Just pull it towards the back. And you'll see it tightening up. Use your fingers. Just go it. Fingers were getting a bit warm there. See what it looks like. That's not too bad. Give the impression of a, a something anyway, a hopper. Uh, you could cut it flush underneath so it's in line if you want. I would just leave it. Ideal. Uh, there we are. There's uh, Alan Shepard's fly, a variant of it called the Nobby's Hopper. Uh, good fun. Just don't be shy with the varnish. I always like to. Make sure there's a, I use the brush obviously, there's a wee bit of varnish in there, onto the thread. It slightly soaks onto the front a wee bit, just a wee bit. And then you could always use a piece of wire or something to clean it out. There you go. Let me know what you think, I'm sure. Uh, you could either tie one without the segment. Uh, the body, like there, or you could just do the original, which is a yellow chenille body on a standard hook. I think it's a size 10 or a 12, is about the right size. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of fun, and uh, 
fly time is all about as well as fishing, sorry. So, until next time, and uh, again, if you enjoy the videos, it always helps if you show, just press that subscribe button because it does make a difference. And thank you for watching.